So now we're going to get to the punchline where we apply this to the mind-body problem. So in the Superman-Clark case, the a posteriority of the identity between Superman and Clark arises because we recognize Superman by certain of his contingent features, and we recognize Clark by different of his contingent features. So when we think we imagine Clark without Superman, what we really imagine is Clark without the features by which we recognize Superman as Superman. This is imaginable because Clark, like Superman, has those features only contingently. In the Heat MMKE case, the a posteriority arises because we recognize heat by a sensation it causes in us. So when we think we imagine heat without MMKE, what we really imagine is the sensation of heat without MMKE. This is imaginable because heat causes the sensation in us only contingently. So it's possible to imagine MMKE without the sensation and pro possible to imagine the sensation without MMKE. Now let's try and do the same thing for the mind-body problem. That is, try and explain how it is that the mind is, say, identical with the brain, but this is uh, something we can't know a priori. We have to say this. We have to say that in the pain brain state case, BS1 just stands for a particular brain state, the a posteriority arises because we recognize pain by a contingent feature or mode of presentation, its feel. So when we think we imagine the brain state without pain, what we really imagine is the brain state without the feel of pain, which is imaginable because pain has that feel only contingently. But wait, screams Kripke, this can't be right. When we ask whether, super, whether Clark is present in a world where someone other than Superman looks like Superman, of course we say no. But when we ask whether pain is present in a world where something other than that brain state feels like pain, we say yes. Here's the crucial thing. In each of these other cases, the intermediary, the appearance of Superman, and the feeling of heat is only contingently connected to the referent. That is, the appearance of Superman is only contingently had by Superman, and the feeling of heat is only contingently had by heat. But in this case, it's different. The feeling of pain is not only contingently had by pain. The feeling of pain just is the same thing as pain. So whereas these intermediaries are contingently had by the thing we're referring to, this intermediary over here is necessarily had by the thing we're referring to. OK. Um, OK, so we, we can ask whether, we can explain why we think Clark could have been someone other than Superman, even though they're identical. We just mistake a world where Clark doesn't fly or wear a cape for a world where Superman, Clark isn't Superman. And we can ask why we think the heat, that heat could have been something other than MMKE, even though they're identical. And we answer, we just make a mistake. We mistake a world where something else feels like heat for a world, we mistake a world where something else feels like heat for a world where heat really is something else. But we can't explain why we think pain could have been something other than the brain state in the same way, because there's no relevant intermediary. For pain, there's no distinction between the appearance, the feel, and the reality, pain. The appearance is the reality. That is, the appearance of pain is pain, whereas the appearance of Superman is not Superman, and the appearance of heat is not heat. And notice this is a semantic point. The word pain, the idea goes, just refers to the feel, whereas the word Superman doesn't refer to the appearance of Superman, it refers to the man in the world. And the word heat doesn't refer to the feeling of heat only, it refers to the thing in the world. So, pain is identical with the brain state, can't be an a posterior identity, at least not in the way that the other a posterior identities arise. And what Kripke says here is actually this. He says, I, if you're going to tell me that an identity is a posteriori, then you're telling me that I can't really think of something that I think I can think of. So, I, because the identity between Superman and Clark is a posteriori, I think I can think of Superman and Clark coming apart. If you were to tell me that it's, uh, they're, they're not identical, sorry, if you were to tell me that they're identical, that they can't really come apart, then you need to say, hey, here's what you're actually doing. You're actually thinking of this other possibility where their appearances come apart, or the appearance comes apart from the guy, and you're mistaking that for Clark and Superman coming apart. And I can say, okay, I'm, I understand, I'm making a mistake. But you can't say this, thinks Kripke. You can't say, look, pain is identical with a brain state, 
And I say, but I can imagine them coming apart, so what am I thinking of? And you say, eh, who knows? And we know, of course, that pain is not identical with a brain state a priori. If it were, then neuroscience would be really simple. You would reflect on the meaning of the term pain and thereby discover the relevant brain state. Well, if it's not identical a posteriori and it's not identical a priori, then they're not identical. So we get dualism. And this dualism falls out of Kripke's way of thinking about the reference for natural kind terms. Okay, and we're going to stop there.